When this building was built, it was the entire skyline of Columbus. You could see it from all directions, all the way to the horizon. When it was built, it was the fifth tallest building in the world. It's 555 and a half feet tall, deliberately six inches taller than the Washington Monument. Part of the ego of the director of the American Insurance Union was to make it big and make it iconic and make it make a statement. And so they built the building and it broke them. They went bankrupt shortly thereafter. And of course, the, when the Great Depression hit, that didn't help any either. The building has been renovated and renovated a number of times. So most of the inside has been gutted and redone. The hotel was taken out, offices were put in. A few units of housing were put in at various times, so there isn't much in the way of historic detail inside except for places like this, which used to be an outdoor observation deck, and then the main lobby. The historic lobby has a lot of beautiful ornamentation. The bronze elevator doors are like nothing anywhere in Columbus. We don't have anything like that. The murals that are in there that are still there is still as it always has been. So in here, these are the brains of the elevators. The historic elevators. This elevator's in good shape, right? Just fine. It's <laughs> in okay. such good shape that we're going to replace it. <laughs> These are the apartments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, floors 19 through 33, the floor above us, will all be for rent apartments. Floors 34 through 37 will be for sale condominiums. This is, I think, one of my favorite units here on the west side. Uh, on this floor, you have these special arch top windows. Well, the first thing people will see when they come in is this view, spectacular view. This floor was the offices of the American Insurance Union. Uh, I think it was this one and the one above it. But we, we talked about how there was very little surviving historic fabric in the building. But here we actually have some. Down this hallway, you can see these old wooden doors. This is an original hallway. They've got the ribbed glass in them, mm -hmm. the little nail slot, the transom up there. And for the apartments on this wing, we'll be preserving the, the, these original doors, putting new door hardware on them. But we're going to be able to use these as the front doors. This is a very elaborate piece of structure we hope will never be used <laughs> because it's an emergency fire exit. These historic copper windows are actually in great shape. We don't see very many copper windows in buildings, and uh, we're thinking maybe we should because they've lasted um, and they're still in good shape. Well, this is it? Penthouse. So at one time, this was an outdoor observation deck. You could pay a nickel or something and take the elevator all the way up to the top, just like the Empire State Building. At some point it was enclosed and uh, later on somebody made it into a two-story uh, penthouse and uh, we're redoing that. So this is going to be a pretty premier place to live. These uh, turrets are kind of interesting because they hold lights now, but when the building was built they had big floodlights. So it was like the revolving beacons you see on old-time airports. There's a wonderful picture during construction of one of the construction workers hanging off of one of these turrets. Uh, a rope that probably doesn't meet OSHA standards today. But the attention to detail, in fact, the, the back side of this turret, there's a little floor de lis that nobody else can see. A pigeon just flew by, could see it. <laughs> Pigeons can't see it. <laughs> this isn't general market kind of stuff. I mean, it's pretty no. quirky space. You have to want it badly, and somebody will. One of my favorite things is. Uh, this bathroom over here had a very glamorous throne <laughs> with a fantastic view. The first year is like being an archaeologist. You have to go back and try to reconstruct what happened. And we have not very many drawings. You can't get rid of the columns. You can't get rid of the beams. You can't get rid of the low ceilings. But you also can't duplicate the views and, and the, the character and the ambiance of a building like this. So by finding uses like apartments and condos in the upper part of the tower and a hotel and five floors of the lower part of the tower, we're able to use a lot of the space for things that fit nicely into that size, that scale. So here on the 10th floor, this is the top level of the new Hotel Levesque. The Hotel Levesque will be a Marriott Autograph Hotel, which is a small-scale boutique hotel, uh, high-end, uh, beautiful finishes. 
Absolutely. This would be a good one for Red, White, and Boom Night. Yeah, it would. And it, it adjoins with the next room if you want to pay for that one as well. <laughs> <laughs> we, we find symbolism all over this building, particularly in the outside. We find the moon and the stars. We see zodiac symbols. We see symbols of ancient religions, a sort of mi a mixture of sort of mysticism that I think speaks to the values of the American Insurance Union when, when the building was built. We still have eagles and all kinds of symbols in the terracotta on the outside. So a lot of that is still intact. This building, as, as time went on, the hotel closed. There was no rent coming in from that. And for many, many years, the Levesque family basically kept it intact as long as they could. Then it was sold, and it was sold to some out-of-state out of state investors. Uh, and then they sold it to some other out-of-state investors. And it really, nobody was paying attention to it. There was nobody that had a kind of a heart for the building. Until 2010, when Bob Myers and Don Casto and a, a number of other local people got together and were able to purchase the building at a very good price, that's what allows them to renovate the building. By investing um, the rest of the money, if you would, in the building, there's a possibility to give it a new life. That combined with the federal and state historic preservation tax credits, which are absolutely critical to the finances of this building. The city of Columbus has been really helpful. So everybody that could, I think, is contributing towards making this building a success. So hotels need meeting rooms. They need a bar and they need a restaurant. And the bar and restaurant are mezzanine level right below us. So this is the area where we created the new lobby. And we tried to create an aesthetic in here that's not a duplicate of the historic building that was as it would have been in the 20s, but one that's comfortable being a, a contemporary version of that building. I always think of buildings a lot like people. They're kind of my children. You pour your heart and soul into the effort, and one day you have to send them free into the world to go live their lives. And It's a very unique experience to work on the building and it will be for all the people that come to the Hotel Levesque, the people that live here, the people that go to the restaurant, the, the, the pub. Uh, it's going to be an icon again and everybody's going to come. They're going to see the colored lights on the roof and they're going to want to come to Levesque.